Hello and welcome back to Pinkology. This is Joelle, one of my foster beans. She was found in a hoarding house. She was like this big when we started fostering her. So she has grown really big and strong. <laughs> This video is so overdue and I am so sorry you guys. This year has gotten the best of me and it has run away with all of my time. But here we are without further ado. These are all of the things that you need for a capsular plication and labrum repair for hip surgery that I recommend. First things first are leg compressors. So these are the you know, air compressors that squeeze your legs to promote blood flow after surgery. So it's not something that you necessarily need, but basically after surgery, this was a lifesaver for preventing blood clots. If you're just laying around a lot, especially with hip surgeries, you really are at high risk for blood clots in general. And so anything that is going to help the blood flow move from your legs to the rest of your body is a godsend. It also just feels really nice when you're laying there in pain to just have that movement going on your legs as if you're getting a leg massage. Next up is a shower chair. I was so on edge about getting one, very uncertain whether I should put in the money for it. It wasn't that expensive. It took like 10 minutes to put together because it comes unassembled in the box. Good to know. But I watched a lot of videos where people didn't get one and they were fine. I happen to be very nauseous and in a lot of pain after my surgery and I would have died <laughs> if I didn't have my shower chair because I totally sat to shower the first like three days. TMI, but you need someone to help you shower, whether that's just behind the curtain handing you things or if it's a spouse or something, you know, helping you do everything. It's very helpful and makes you independent. If you can just sit there, you can wash your hair, you can do everything, but it is extremely painful to just stand. It's like this pulling sensation from the joint. And so if you can sit down, it is, just a breath of fresh air to be able to shower and take care of yourself. Another thing that I purchased was a drive walker. These are expensive. There's really no way to get around that. Um, the other thing is that you cannot find them on Facebook Marketplace or that are gently used at Goodwill or anything like that because something that I learned is that you cannot resell medical supplies unless it's through a medical supplies resale store. The only reason I purchased a drive walker was because my mom and sisters and I were planning to go to a Christmas market in uh, Minneapolis and I knew this is only a couple weeks after surgery I'm not gonna be walking yet or like approved to walk very far yet and so my surgeon said I could go if I had a walker I could sit on and so I chose to invest in the drive walker I thought you know the seat lifts up you can put stuff that I that I purchased in the seat or I can have you know pain medications or heating pads or whatever in there for myself at the at the market however a family emergency happened and we weren't able to um, attend the holiday market and so it definitely was a couple hundred dollar loss <laughs> um, but at the end of the day you know family is more important of course but definitely something you do not need to buy unless you're trying to go be active or have to go somewhere absolutely have to go somewhere during your recovery period next up is crutches um, your hospital will supply you with them they will fit you to them however after surgery i was fit to ones that were like an inch or two short for me and so it really hurt my back in my recovery because i was very much like slumped over so definitely make sure they fit it's kind of hard because usually you're laying down post-op and they're like do these work and you're like yeah. <laughs> get crutches that work and use them correctly. The next are um, things that I recommend using for physical therapy and your physical therapist might recommend something different. That's totally fine. I had a very um, aggressive <laughs> physical therapist in the best way possible. So he was very much, you know, do the PT at least a month before surgery. And then we were at PT like day three, something like that. So he didn't really have a big recovery period. Um, it was kind of jumping right into PT after a couple of rest days post-op. So one of them is just a, um, a band. And so I have at least two of these because for a lot of the exercises, you'll need them around your knees and your ankles, or sometimes, you know, your elbows and your ankles or whatever it may be. It's very helpful to have two on hand. Otherwise you're going to be kind of like half doing the exercises that are used to strengthen the hip. 
The other thing I used regarding PT was this Diam Yoga Block. These are pretty inexpensive. You don't have to get the brand name. I just thought it would be fun to pick a fun color and it would motivate me a little bit more in recovery. So that's how my brain works. These ones are just very soft. They're very durable. And you use these for a lot of, you know, putting your knee up, putting it down, putting your hip up, putting it down, things like that. After surgery, when you're really just working on those core muscles and just moving the joint in a way that it's supposed to move when it just feels like it shouldn't. So last but certainly not least is something that I could not have lived without after surgery. And that was a toilet razor with handles. This thing total godsend. I am so glad that I bought it. I would choose that even over a shower chair if you have to pick one um, medical kind of assistive object to purchase. Get the toilet seat razor. Unless you have extremely high toilets as it is, it is so painful to sit on an object that's even a couple feet off the ground like a toilet without anything to hold on to because you have no muscles in your hips like everything in that hip has died like it's just you need to work it to make, get it back to life which is why you do therapy and it takes months literal months for that to get working again and so for me if i did not have that to lower myself down on the toilet i would have been using my like my fiance there's in my bathroom like there's nothing the sink is very far away there's no object to hold on to and so it was a godsend for me and a hundred percent worth the price 10 out of 10 would buy it again it's also important to think about before surgery kind of how you're going to get down on a toilet it sounds weird but it's helpful to practice because you have to stick your operated on you know leg straight out and then sit down as if you're doing a one-legged um like almost like a pistol squat with the other leg all the way down to the toilet and so having those handles is so important the other thing is sometimes I felt really nauseous because you go all the way to the bathroom, you know, you finally sit down, you go to the bathroom, and then you're kind of sitting there like, ooh, I don't feel so good. Maybe you're a little nauseous. And that way you have two handles, like it's a little more safe, you're a little more secure, just kind of while you're, you're doing your thing. And so I think that's the most important advice that I could give is buy the toilet seat razor with the foam handles thank me later. That's it for equipment, but I did want to talk briefly about my recovery in general. So I am currently about one year and three months out from my capsular application and hip labral repair. At this point, I can do everything that I did pre-op except better and more stabilized. So I can dance again. I can run again. Um, I wasn't cleared for running or higher like impact risk activities probably until... I mean, nine months, maybe closer to that 12 months, somewhere in their mark. It's a journey. Uh, it's not, not for the lighthearted who are super active because it, it is a mental game, honestly, more than a physical game. Even just losing your crutches was like the best day in the world. I remember walking out of the clinic and being like, this feels so weird. It hurts, but I'm so excited. I don't have to lean on my crutches. Yep. <laughs> The other thing that I didn't mention in supplies um, of things you need is obviously your brace. Um, I had a brace and crutches. And then the way that my surgeon did it was I was allowed to choose which one I wanted to lose to be without at the, I can't even remember, at the two month mark, um, I got to lose one of them. And so I chose the brace. I was like, get this thing off me. I'm sick of this brace. It was just so uncomfortable to do anything with it. And so I chose to lose the brace, but then losing the crutches was like a whole nother ball game because you just felt so free and like you've accomplished so many things because you don't have any assistive devices anymore helping you after surgery. So activity wise now, um, I of course have no restrictions. It is a, just an incredible feeling to be able to sit, to sleep, to really do absolutely anything, to take my dog on a walk uh, without having to stop because I'm in leg pain and kind of pop my hip, do all those different things. I had no idea how much of a control it had over my life until I had it fixed, essentially. So I definitely recommend getting the surgery if you need it, especially the capsular replication. I believe that was really the kicker when it comes to stability for my joint, just kind of fixing that overlay um, and having it just way more secure and stabilized when I move 
was just a total game changer for me. As for setbacks, I did have one setback in my recovery. Um, that was around month, uh, I believe it was month 11. I think it was around month 11, around my one year mark, because I was just about to be cleared from seeing him for ever. Um, and I pulled something in my hip. I think I was walking my dog and I got like jolted, uh, tripped over something and it pulled and I had this panic just wash over me and burn and it felt like here we go I'm gonna have to do it all over again just this terror so I called my surgeon and I said hey I need to see you this week you know I think I ripped something and it turns out I just sprained um sprained my hip sprained my hip joint area so uh, I just needed some rest and recovery about two weeks later it felt back to normal so even if you feel like you messed it up or you did something a little too early just breathe, take a step back. It's gonna be okay. Call your surgeon, they're there to help you. They are lovely and will pass out PT referrals like candy. So if you need more time in PT, that's totally fine. Find a PT that you can work with and that works well with you, that pushes you enough, but not too far for your recovery and all those kinds of things. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this was helpful to anyone who is about to have a hip labrum repair with a capsular application. I know I watched about a thousand of these videos before my surgery and it was very helpful to know, you know, people came out on the other side. Um, I like to know the timelines of kind of when people were cleared from things. I thought that was very helpful to my brain and how I organize things and look forward to things. You know, if you get in a mental rut post-op, don't worry, that's very normal. It's easy to kind of fall into like a quick little depression of like, I'm never gonna recover. I'm never gonna be able to do activities again. You will, like, here I am, you know, living a testimony here for that. Even if it's it's pretty bad, like I literally could not squat to the floor or I would fall over before my surgery. And now I can do anything that anyone can do. And it's incredible. I had to take a lot of time to build that muscle back up and I still do. Um, you know, it's been a year of a lot of work for me and I haven't had time to exercise like I normally would, would want to, but it's still just so, amazing to be mobile and to be able to um, just do the things that I want to do if I want to dance or run or do yoga, whatever it may be. So hang in there. Good luck to you if you are about to have this surgery and feel free to comment down below if there's anything that I can help clarify or answer. Thanks for watching.